Okay, we're starting to get a little bit ridiculous here. We have four tubes involved now. We have an RF stage. It's a tuned RF stage working with the ferrite rod. We took the ferrite rod from this, uh, this particular grid leak detector that we turned into a regen. We took it off there and we put it onto this other stage, which is a 1U4 pentode RF stage. And we put the original coil uh, from the grid leak detector back on. So this has been restored to a grid leak detector. I left the variable screen voltage control that was our regen control from the last video because that's kind of operating as a RF gain control of sorts. So I left it on there. So we now have two stages of selectivity. We have the selectivity of the ferrite rod and the selectivity of the grid leak detector grid circuit. So here's a basic TRF stage using a 1U4 tube. Um, it has both a tuned input and a tuned output. Um, this will work as long as you've got good isolation between the input and the output, but the problem is uh, you still could get tune plate, tune grid type feedback from plate to a control grid and thus this becomes a uh, an oscillator. So it needs to have neutralization for something like this to work. It doesn't really matter what you do to the output. Uh, some of that output's going to get into the input and it's going to oscillate. So rather what we like to do is we like to go into something like a choke or a, a broad transformer on the output and uh, get the output impedance back down. Uh, so we can go into the input of our crystal set or the input of our grid leak detector or a, a regenerative detector or whatever we've got that we want to feed and that lessens the chance of feedback and oscillation. Now you can use a transformer like I'm showing here, a broadband transformer, and it does work. But rather, um, if you can actually use the input link that you normally connect to the antenna and ground and actually run that uh, from uh, B plus to the plate, um, that solves a couple of problems for you. Uh, but you do have to put some B plus onto the, uh, the primary of the uh, tune circuit of your crystal set or the grid leak detector in our case. Also notice C2 and R2. Uh, both of those components are a grid leak system that sets the bias and allows the 1U4 to run in Class A. We still have to run in Class A mode. Uh, is this a detector? Could this be a grid leak detector? Well, uh, because C2 is so large, um, it tends not to be a detector. Instead, it's, it's only amplifying the RF. Um, could it overload and potentially cause some pre-detection? It's possible. So some form of RF gain control should be added to the TRF stage. So these are a few things to think about when you're designing a tuned radio frequency stage. BC, Boston's News Radio. It's 11.07 and now turning to Bloomberg Business on your Saturday. So when we're talking about a TRF receiver where we have an RF stage, a detector stage, and an audio amplifier stage, uh, in this case we're up to four tubes, four valve TRF. Now if you were talking about just triode tubes, this is a typical setup that was used probably in the 1920s, although they would have had one more 
RF stage, possibly two more RF stages. So this is a two dialer. These two dials have to be lined up to be able to resolve any one station. Now four tubes turns out to be the minimum you need to build a super heterodyne with conventional modern tubes which have specialized functions. So it turns out that with four valves that are specialized valves, like a frequency changer tube that includes the oscillator and the mixer, uh, this could for instance be the IF amplifier, the third tube could be your detector and first audio stage, and the final tube could be your output or your audio output amplifier. Um, and of course there are specialized tubes like that. But if we're talking pure triodes, each of these triode stages um, the TRF, of, of course, is, is probably the simplest uh, type that's going to give you the full coverage of the band. Now, I left the link on the front of the ferrite rod. See, I've still got the link on there. And I left it on there for two reasons. So, the first reason is, I already got it on there for regenerative feedback, I didn't want to take it off, and uh, so I got lazy and just left it on. But then I thought, actually, this would make an uh, excellent place to attach the antenna and the ground connection. It's an input coupling link, in this case, for this TRF. The other thing I can do with this is I can flip it around like I did before, and I can add some regeneration to the RF stage, making it more sensitive, and that would be called a regenerative preselector, a regenerative preselector. That's using the power of regeneration to increase the gain and Q of the RF stage before the detector. Okay, so that's why I left that link on there. We might use that for something else. Also notice I still have my antenna tuner on there because that always gets more signal in. Although now that I have this much gain of two stages, I probably do not require the antenna tuner any longer. As long as I'm hooked up to my 75 feet of wire, I should be able to resolve all kinds of stations without resorting to antenna tuning of any kind. So if we disconnect the antenna and use just the rod, this will work as an amplified antenna, like an active antenna in front of the detector. And this is back to the original grid leak detector. Notice I left the screen grid voltage control still connected. Why did I leave that? Because that's my RF gain control now. That becomes my RF gain control in effect. Now it'd be better to have an RF gain control over here on the RF amplifier because I did notice that we are overloading the detector somewhat on very strong stations. So we need the attenuation here, not here. But it does help some. Also, uh, notice that I've used the input coupling link and I'm running the voltage from the battery through the link and then back into the plate of the amplifier tube. So I'm making use of the input coupling link on the coil as the way I'm coupling the signal from the RF amplifier into the detector stage. So you don't want to ground this. You still have to have a ground between the units. These two have to be grounded together but that input link is floating and the, uh, the B plus voltage is on this link. And that's how we're getting the signal from the RF amplifier tube into the grid leak detector stage. Also, we have enough gain now that we can dispose of the transformer altogether and simply resistance couple into the amplifier. So there's some benefits of uh, having an extra gain stage up front. We've actually got too much gain for my 75-foot antenna with a tuner. I'm going to uh, take that tuner out of line right now. Okay, the tuner is now removed. The 75-foot antenna and ground is hooked up to that input link on the RF amplifier. This role as a bench coach as compared to a manager. Like managers, there's so much media that's involved with it. and. Pero, eh, ojalá, ojalá. 
restaurant to close down last week after customers reported getting sick and inspectors found a lot of food safety violations and as you may know U.S. malaria cases diagnosed in decades in Florida and you can tell the antenna is resonant up at the higher frequency. We're picking up more noise with the antenna. Without the tuner, we can't resonate the antenna at the lower frequencies. It still picks up, but it's not, you're not hearing background noise like we hear. Um. Obviously, a lot more numbers now, a lot more advanced uh, analytics and, and things like that. Yeah, I think the RF stage still needs an RF uh, gain control. Next, let's remove the antenna and just use the ferrite rod. Okay, I've just removed it. Okay, this is a fairly local station. Yeah, it's much more difficult to find stations with the TRF with just the rod than we could with the regen because we could always turn the regen on and find the blips where the stations are. So we're going to have to take it outside see what it does up on the uh, table on the deck. From the Storm March 9 Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Jacqueline Thomas. Well, you probably noticed Microsoft coming out with a zero-day patch. Did you notice? Don't even know what they are. Well, that was in my newsletter. We're going to talk about that right now. What is zero-day? What are these threats? And what can... So I'm getting WBZ. Let's see if I can get any others. So here's 1370, and of course it has to be pointed right at the station located over in Bedford. So I had to turn the whole assembly in order to pick up this station. So there's no doubt we're a little shy on gain to use it with the ferrite rod compared to the regeneration. So of course the logical next step would be to bring that feedback into the RF stage to give it some advantage up front in order to uh, get a little more sensitivity with the rod. You can configure how the week before it installs a patch. The whole version now, it is going to install patches whether you want it to or not. And it's going to install them certainly when you want it the least, right, right in the middle of something else that you're doing. Very, very important. There are eight more, yeah, eight more tips here. So, okay, the TRF is not as sensitive as the regen, no doubt about that, but it is able to pick up stations. It's a little simpler in the circuitry. You're not dealing with feedback or having to set the regeneration control or anything like that, but you do have to line up the two tuning capacitors so that they're both on the same station. So, there's some improvement. If we had one more stage, I think we'd be able to pick up a lot more stations. Um, and ultimately in the 1920s they had several stages all in cascade and they had to worry about neutralizing that. And uh, when the uh, super heterodyne came around and it was able to convert everything to one lower intermediate frequency where we could get more stability and more gain safely, it completely eliminated this TRF idea. Who wanted to be messing with three or four dials anyway just to tune one station? So single, single knob tuning and the super heterodyne took over very quickly from this approach. The other thing, we have one, two, three, four valves. Four valves is all you need to do a proper super heterodyne, by the way, with a uh, frequency changer tube that includes the oscillator and the converter or mixer. Um, with the second stage being an IF amplifier, uh, automatic gain control, 
uh, detection and the first stage of audio in the third tube and then finally the power amplifier you can make a dandy super heterodyne with four valves four tubes all you need to make a good super head so what about the all-american five well that fifth tube is just the power supply rectifier tube really it's a four tube super heterodyne as most of the table radios were uh, the late 20th century. So we could do one more thing I suppose with this circuit. We could add regeneration to the RF stage. Uh, that would give you uh, quite an enhancement in gain, but it would make the tuning more critical as well. So I don't know if that's a very good idea. Maybe we'll try that for a short. Um, we could make the detector a regenerative stage. That would certainly increase the gain. And you might get some, uh, some uh, excellent uh, results. Uh, having a single tuned radio frequency stage ahead of a regen uh, can be done. It's tricky because a lot of times there's a relationship between uh, the tuning of the RF stage and the re regen stage upsetting the amount of uh, feedback you need. So it's uh, difficult to make a tuned radio frequency regen. It's been done. People have done it in the past. There's some very selective uh, uh, TRF style regens where they have one or two stages of RF before the regenerative stage but it's very difficult to accomplish. So I hope you've enjoyed this uh, video series on kind of uh, the basics of radio using battery tubes. Lots of good ideas in this series and uh, hope you start building.